Hi, welcome to my video log or vlog. I haven't done one of these in quite a while and I've been getting bothered uh, by people to uh, pick it up again. They wanted to hear another video from me, so here it is. And I'm going to talk about the Senate expense scandal. Uh, that's the one where um, Mike Duffy and Nigel Wright and Stephen Harper are some of the main names that you'll recognize. And I'm just going to start from the beginning as I see it chronologically to explain what the scandal is about and why it's pretty significant uh, to Canadian politics and why you probably should care about it if you don't. Um, starting back in 2008 uh, during the election, uh, Mike Duffy was a journalist for CTV. Uh, I grew up watching Mike Duffy on Sunday Edition and uh, respected him immensely and thought he was uh, great. And then during the election there was a few interviews with Elizabeth May and Stefan Dion where he seemed to um, pull some ethical slips as I saw it. And then a short time later he was appointed to the Senate by uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Uh, you can draw conclusions from that what you will. He. Um, became one of the Conservatives' top fundraisers, uh, traveling across the country saying, I'm Mike Duffy, the Duffster, look at me, I'm a TV celebrity, saying that the Conservatives are doing a great job and you should send your money to the party. When you donate to a political party in Canada, the political party gets that money and the taxpayer who donates gets a tax rebate, so in effect every taxpayer pays uh, some portion, about 75% of the political donors um, out-of-pocket money. So the taxpayer pays quite a bit for political donations. And the Conservatives are large fundraisers, the, the most successful party for fundraising. So what they had Mike Duffy and Pamela Wallen doing was traveling the country and while they were doing this they were making expense claims as senators which they aren't allowed to do to make uh, partisan trips uh, and raise for the Conservative Party while claiming that they're on Senate business. And in addition to this um, improper, uh, illegal even uh, expenses the scandal, there was housing allowances going to these senators and I think uh, Senator Brazo kicked up this scandal pretty significantly when um, he sort of fell out of favor with the media after insulting a bunch of them and uh, losing to Justin Trudeau in a boxing match and that sort of thing. And uh, he lived uh, not far enough away from Ottawa, I think was the problem, so that he could legitimately claim a travel expense, a living expense. And Mike Duffy's lived in Canada, Ontario for since the beginning of his journalism career in Ottawa, most likely, and hasn't really lived in Prince Edward Island. And Pamela Wallen lives in Toronto and didn't really live in Wadena, Saskatchewan. And senators have to have their primary residence in the province that they're representing in the Senate. So these people, these senators had a big problem in even being appointed and the Prime Minister shouldn't have appointed them in the first place but again he wanted celebrities in the Senate to raise on the taxpayer dime more money for the Conservative Party and that's what the root of this problem is all about. So it started to become a big problem at the end of last year and the Conservatives were very concerned about public perception of the senators being caught with their hands in the cookie jar, the senators that the Prime Minister appointed to the Senate. To reduce the impact that the scandal of illegal fundraising uh, would have on the Conservatives, they cooked up a scheme in the Prime Minister's office, the PMO, and the head guy in the Prime Minister's office, Nigel Wright, and various other senators that were conservatives uh, by email um, and in-person meetings cooked up a scheme to 
um, with Duffy, it appears, according to emails that were released today, cooked up a scheme to allow um, Duffy to be repaid by the Conservative Party fund, and they thought it was about $30,000 that they'd have to uh, pay him so he could pay back money that he legally claimed, which he claimed in the Senate, that was authorized to claim this illegal money by other senators who said there's no big problem with this. In fact, even the Prime Minister, who reviewed personally, he said, Pamela Wallen's expenses, he said they're in line with other parliamentarians. Since then, she's been kicked out of the Senate for uh, these uh, illegal expense claims. So if her illegal expense claims are in line with all other parliamentarians that Harper's familiar with, <laughs> how many other illegal <laughs> expenses are going around? And Duffy claimed in the Senate a few weeks ago that he was blackmailed into a monstrous political scheme, which was this um, cover story that he'd say that he got a RBC bank loan and would repay the taxpayer and be very, very, very sorry, uh, you know, sincerely, sincerely, sincerely sorry that uh, he did this sort of thing, threw in a few PEI-isms is what was in the RCMP release uh, today that the media got a hold of. This would give supposedly the public the impression that the Conservatives had compelled their senator to repay the taxpayers and they wouldn't be out any money, so no harm, no foul, even though there was a crime. Well, the expenses were more than $30,000, and for some reason the Conservatives balked at paying more than 30000 even though they paid more than 40000 for Peter Panashaway's illegal uh, election expenses and illegal election donations. Panashaway being a minister who's since been turfed and now uh, not re-elected in, in Labrador. So this is at the beginning of this year, um, maybe in March uh, or February, uh, Duffy and Nigel Wright and the Prime Minister, just the three of them, Duffy said, were talking about this problem. And Prime Ministers denied knowing anything about Duffy's repayment scheme that Nigel Wright implemented by cutting a check and the Conservative Party cut a check to um, somebody, I think, to write, no, to Duffy, to cover legal expenses. They cut a $13,000 check out of Arthur Hamilton's uh, legal firm office, is what I recall. So the Conservative Party ended up paying, after all, to Duffy some money. <coughs> Nigel Wright, who's a Bay Street boy, really super rich, cut a $90,000 check to Duffy and when this was all found out I think it was in middle of May around the 16th uh, I said well <laughs> if you pay a senator for something that isn't work uh, isn't that a bribe and there seems to be law that backs this up and the RCMP have confirmed that they allege that the money sent from Nigel Wright to Senator Duffy is a bribe. So the way I boil down the scandal for people, uh, in shorter in this uh, long diatribe, is that the Prime Minister and Duffy were discre discreetly blackmailing each other for the better part of the year. That's what Andrew Coyne described it as. And they were black, du the Prime Minister was blackmailing the Senator to take the bribe to repay the money that he'd been authorized to claim even though it was illegal and then when he did take this money and play along with their scheme the Senate leader uh, Marjorie LeBreton and another senator Stuart Olson she and others and uh, David Tkachuk had threatened Duffy with expulsion uh, if he didn't play along because he didn't live in the province that he was representing. 
so they would just say uh, if he didn't play along then he'd get the boot. Well he screwed up and either intentionally or otherwise uh, sent an email to a friend and it got over to CTV's uh, uh, reporter Fife and he broke this story that there was something fishy going on in the Prime Minister's office and since then with all the investigations and what came out today it's pretty clear and there isn't really anyone sincerely doubting <laughs> that the Prime Minister knew something was going on even if he didn't know that's a problem for him because he and other ministers have made it their careers up until recently to say that ministers have responsibility for what goes on in their office. They've even gone so far as to storm into committee meetings and say ministers are responsible and we don't have to let our staff uh, talk to any committee because we're responsible, we'll do the talking. Except when it's convenient, uh, they'll throw some staffer under the bus. So why would you care about this? Well, the Prime Minister lied in Parliament, and Thomas Mulcair was grilling the Prime Minister again today. Um, just, I don't know, a few days ago, uh, he was saying, uh, asking rather in question period, do you know that, did you know that the uh, uh, Prime Minister's office was under investigation by the RCMP? And the uh, Prime Minister denied it. Well, today the RCMP's ITO information to obtain um, a production order, etc., came to light, and Nigel Wright and others in the office knew about um, what was going on. Their emails are missing. Um, the Prime Minister claimed that he had ordered that no email should be deleted. Well, if he didn't know what was going on, why would he know that there were emails to not delete? Uh, or <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Obviously, he knew what was going on. Somebody deleted messages that they weren't allowed to under access to information laws. Uh, Duffy had kept emails, Nigel Wright had kept a binder or something that he had to deliver to the RCMP to avoid obstruction charges. These people are uh, criminals and they're in the Prime Minister's office, the key office that's directing pretty much everything in uh, Canada right now. Um, there's a lot of disdain for the Prime Minister's office from uh, MPs who have gone independent uh, from obviously uh, Mike Duffy isn't too uh, pleased with the Prime Minister's office right now and this kind of thing should bring down the Prime Minister because he can't lie in Parliament like that and get caught <laughs> he shouldn't lie anyway but he got caught it's so obvious and he got caught on multiple lies from not knowing that anything was going on to not admitting that his office was under investigation. There's no way he should be able to escape this and keep his job. Ministers are responsible for what goes on in their ministry. He wasn't responsible enough to stop his chief of staff from blackmailing or bribing a senator. That's pretty serious. He should resign and in disgrace. Anyway, that's Canadian politics for the past um, several years summed up and to one scandal. And that doesn't even touch on the uh, election fraud scandal, which might be even more serious, really. I think it is. But you can think about the Senate expense scandal right now, or Duffy Gate, as some call it. I just call it Duffy on Twitter. Thanks for listening. I've talked your ear off for almost 15 minutes, and hopefully this video works re really well. I uh, didn't test the audio too much, but it seems to be working, uh, and have a good night, everybody.